Hey everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the top tier PvP YouTube channel. Uh, this is Brendan. I'll be your moderator for today. This video will be going over a uh, the left uh, talent tree here on the talent spec board for uh, the discum please for PvP RBGs. Um, I had previously made a video in regard to the right side talent tree, which is just about an hour's worth of length. Um, it's elaborated on each of the talents that you see um, located on the tree. It'll be explaining why, what benefits, and what negatives come from those, and why I choose the build that I choose to based on uh, teamfight healings 10v10 via RBGs. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. We'll start here on the left. Um, top left here, obviously, we're going to have renew. It's pretty obvious. You can't even click it off of your talent tree. Renew is going to be just, you know, if you're not familiar with Disc Priest in general, as you probably should be by 70, uh, you can uh, use Renew just to you know apply it to your team that's currently getting um, dotted up by boomies, by Affy locks, etc. It just helps kind of mitigate that damage and heal in response to that. So Renew is going to be obligatory. Um, feel free to do so. Click Renew, good to go. Uh, the next is going to be Dispel Magic. It's going to be a must. Um, dispel magic uh, is going to be great for single target dispels on, say, the you know particular team fights. In addition to their tank, who's getting buffed and healed by the healers and flag carry maps. Dispel magic is going to be your priority in terms of healing um, for uh, dispelling the um, particular target that your target calls on to as well, just to mitigate and reduce any of the healing absorption, etc. And so forth, um, and the damage output too, as well on that particular target to bring them down a lot quicker, and you can kind of steamroll those team fights. So yes, yes, and dispel magic, um, and actually is something you can't pick up. So uh, it's going to be obligatory to get dispel magic for PvP RPGs. Uh, the next is going to be here on the Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend is going to be a must. Um, you can't actually take it off it regardless. It is specifically. Um, Granted towards your specialization as a discipline priest, discipline priest. Um, so, Shadow Fiend definitely a must. Uh, I'd highly recommend using Shadow Fiend anywhere below 50% or 75% of your mana during team fights, just to help replenish some of that mana that had been lost during that period of time. It can generate up to 0.5% mana each time the Shadow Fiend attacks. Great way to get the most out of it if you're currently, you know struggling to sustain those long team fight battles. Um, I had not gone with Prayer of Mending for the point that Powered Radiance is pretty much your AoE burst heal spell and a replace to this. Um, prayer of Healing, or, sorry, Prayer of Mending is a near 10 second cooldown. Power Radiance, when you do get the 5 second cooldown reduction, is at 15 seconds. So with Prayer of Mending, it's really not as, as use, it only applies to 4 targets in general jumps to four targets, Jordan jumps to four targets in particular, um, and the healing output isn't necessarily, so it seems like it's more so a waste of a talent tree in terms of utility and heals and overall, and some of these heals that benefit off of your right talent tree spec. So I went ahead and not chose Prayer of Mending, I um, associate that particular spell um, in regards to uh, PvE related content as opposed to PvP more than anything, and I'll usually get that and pick that up too as well for um, for um, when I go holy for raids. Otherwise, I look to not use that for PvP at all during any portions. Um, in addition to also using focused mending too as well, which is not necessary because since you don't have prayer mending, it's just a waste of a talent to choose focused mending if you you know, if you choose that. So you're wasting two talent trees, which you could be using in another area that is more utility based and more direct heals that benefit from it. Um, we're going to go ahead and go next to improved flash heal. It's a must. You're going to be using uh, flash heal quite often in team fights. It does get procced by um, those instant uh, casts for flash heal. So um, it's just an additional 15%. It also does get procced by your From Darkness Comes Light. Which is each time a shed word pain or purge the wicked deals damage to the he damage, the healing of a next flash heal is increased by 1% up to a maximum of 50%. So the ideal is to spam purge the wicked in teamfights 
um, in order to get the most out of that particular flash shield that you're going to be using when that particular flash shield procs. So you get an extra 50% in addition to the, um, let's see, additional to the 15% that you see there because you'll have that much more of a chance to have to proc if you have that many Purge the Wickets out currently out on the uh, team fight. So, highly recommend that over the 10% damage reduction that you get when you cast Flash Heal on yourself. Again, that's on yourself, not on others too as well, just because that benefits more just you than it does overall team fight and healing composition. Um, let's see, the next tier, um, Improved Purify, not necessary. Um, there are just one class, there is just one class, that applies a disease effect in the RBGs, or just in general, it's the decays, and it's actually really often that they apply the diseases as well too. It's really quick, and with an 8 second cooldown for Purify, it's not necessary to have in your kit. It's just a waste of a talent point too as well. Preferably you'd be using that more so with PvE than PvP related content. It's not necessarily needed for PvP. Um, Especially, I don't see why yourself you should be getting by a DK if you're not if you're healing too as well if you're in the back line for the most part unless you're getting trained by one. Otherwise, it's not necessary to have that improved purify and just to make do with it with another talent. Um, next is going to be a psychic voice and um, petrifying scream, and I chose not to have either of these just because as a defensive healer for the most part as opposed to aggressive healer kind of up in your face kind of deal. I don't find myself using Psychic Scream um, more so. I will in certain occasions if I end up using it on their backline healers, but as opposed to their frontline, you know, I care more about peeling for my backline than I do their particular, you know, backline healers casting and so forth. So I wouldn't want to throw myself into the, you know, fire kind of per se and say that um, I'm jumping into their backline as a healer in order to Psychic Scream them. Again, it's situational, but for the most part, I'd rather peel for my um, my DPS. So having it used, you know, as often as I can seems beneficial, and often I don't need to use it that often. So I tend to have like a melee front line that we're bursting, and they're on our back line, and they just die pretty quick. It seems like it's unnecessary to have constant psychic screams going on in particular, so... Uh, Shadow Ward Death is going to be a must, especially since you're going to be outputting damage to heal as an atonement healing support class. Shadow Ward Death is pretty much a kill secure move, similar to like kill shot would be for hunters. Shadow Ward Death um, has a 10% uh, sorry 10 second cooldown, a 40 yard range, which is great, and um, it really is just a kill secure move uh, when the target gets below. Um, uh, target gets below, what, 20% or so? Um, it procs, and you can, um, it'll kind of flash when it procs too as well, so it'd be a great time to use it. And you can actually use it twice too as well if it fails to kill um, the target below 20%. So it's a great assistant or addition to targets during a target call in team fights. So I'd highly recommend using Shadow or Death uh, as often as possible when the target is near death. Uh, just secures the kill and it also heals based on that shadow damage to the rest of the um, to the rest of your team that also has atonement. So just in the recommendation in terms of what to use in your kit and how often to use it for sure. So uh, the next is going to be Holy Nova and I do not use Holy Nova. I chose not to just because again it uh, requires kind of that second talent to kind of benefit off of it. And to be honest, I don't find myself spamming something of that nature. Team fights, just because the um, excuse that, um, just because I don't find myself putting out as much damage, especially in a 10v10 when the damage reduction is below five targets, it doesn't seem necessary to be using Holy Nova when um, you know you're you're putting out more of a rotation for your shadow moves in addition to some of your uh, damage radiant moves in particular. So. Don't necessarily find it. I don't find it necessary whatsoever to use Holy Nova, and nor on the second tree of Rhapsody as well. So. Um, another utility base, just because as a dis disciplined priest, we often find ourselves pretty stationary healers. Um, we're pretty immobile, but we're good, you know, core, you know, damage reduction, dispels, shields, you know, really burst heals, um, angelic feather. Adds more motive, 
bit more mobility in terms of our stationary output that we have as single target healers and just, you know, more um, bulkier healers in particular. So the Angelic Feather just gives us a little bit more mobility to follow up with our tank if he's cutting around, or more defensive healers on flag carry maps, and just to kind of speed up others too as well that are kind of falling behind if they need to catch up with the flag carrier as well too. So highly recommend getting Angelic Feathers, it opens up a bit more of a uh, talent spec too as well. Uh, it is a 20 second recharge, 40% increased movement speed, and as a Disciplined Priest again, mobility somewhat lax but they've compensated that with you know penance and power word shield gives you a, mo a movement speed boost too as well which actually which you benefit off from as well so um yeah just something else to consider and um one of my favorite uses just use it as frequently as possible in order to outrun enemies or to um, assist with your team too as well to increase their speed to get to objectives and so forth um, the next is going to be Phantasm, and I chose to choose this one just because the uh, Fade, uh, it is just a, what is it, 26 cooldown? 36 It's great to see, uh, it's great to use Fade if you're locked up by Warriors or DKs, etc. if you're getting trained by them. It's great to use Fade and then Penance and then Shield there afterwards because you get a really big speed boost that stacks with one another. And you can zoom and just, you know, speed away from those particular hazards. Um, you know, when you pop fade to mitigate to remove those snare-like effects. Um, so, highly recommend getting it. Uh, in addition to dispelling too as well, you can dispel like entangling roots, but the fade will be used for like hamstrings, chains of ice, stuff that you can naturally dispel with your uh, purify as itself. So what you could use is fade, and that will help you remove those snare-like Highly recommend picking up Phantasm. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Death and Madness just benefits off of Shadow War Death. Again, it's kind of like your second ability or second proc to use Shadow War Death in order to have a kill secure target on your target. Um, so if you ha didn't happen to kill your target or got healed or suppressed or whatever during uh, you know during that one period, he hadn't died in the team fight or whatever. You can use that once more in order to ensure the kill if you happen to do it again. The more shadow damage you put out too, as well, it just applies to your atonement healing. You can heal the um, the raid or heal your yeah heal your raid basically um, um, while putting out more damage. Uh, the next talent we're gonna look at is gonna be why I chose not spell warding or blessed recovery. Um, again, you're not gonna be the target of focus in team fights as a disciplined priest. You're really going to be on the back line of such. You're really going to be that priest to be cleaned up after a team fight, kind of like the last. Even then, it's still pretty difficult to kill a, a well, you know, experienced disc priest as they're kind of create a little bit of burst of mobility and then a burst of healing too as well. So it's really difficult to kill priests, disc priest in particular. Um, so your target isn't. You're you're not going to be targeted in those team fights in particular. So after being struck by a melee or range critical hit. Um, heal 20% of the damage taken over 6 seconds. Again, you're not going to be the target of target, so having that crits bling blown up in you is not very common. Not worth the talent, in addition to the additional 3% magic reduction reduced. So, highly not recommend it. Again, if you know, you're not working with Bray Mending or Holy Nova, so this kind of left side here is not necessary at this time, unless you're going to be working more so with PvE related content. Uh, Leap of Faith is going to be a must. It's a utility based um, pull, basically, that brings the target close to you. It has a 40 yard range, 1.5 minute cooldown. It's phenomenal. I mean, in so many situations, um, it's such a it's a game changer, really. I mean, you can pull up the tank if he gets MC'd off of, uh, you know, Blacksmith if he's getting mind controlled off there, and you got to pull him back up and um, benefit from. You know, with flag carrier maps, you can pull the tank out into the flag node, you can carry people out of position, you can catch someone in mid-air in Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm, if they get knocked off, like, it's it's really a phenomenal um, utility-based back. you got to be really quick-witted with it itself, you can't just, you know, use it sparingly, I would use it quite often. 
Um, again, another situation would be that if you pulled someone across the river in, say, Twin Peaks when they're carrying the flag, just adds more mobility and it's just a great versatile utility kit. So definitely get Leap of Faith. You'll use it as, I wouldn't say often as possible, but you'll use it in situations. So, and you'll find yourself using it more often in those situations again and again. So, um, Leap of Faith can also apply to situations, say, if like a warrior or a pally or your melee frontline go way too hard into a team fight without the rest of the group, you can pull them out of it and, um, you know, retract the whole team fight and mitigate it in itself. So, something to benefit it, nonetheless. A way to look at it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Shackle and Dead are not necessary for PvP. Oh, excuse that. Um, Shackle and Dead is not necessary for PvP. You're not going to be using it once. It's more so for like PvE afflictions, afflictions that you see in um, like Mythic Dungeons and so forth, and just PvE related content. But again, I don't even often carry it in PvE unless I'm doing Mythic Plus. Uh, but PvP, you're not going to be using it. It's just very. Very, 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 very uncommon. I guess you could use it for a DK's minion, but like, how many minions can you end up getting? <laughs> you can only use it for that one particular time. It only does one target. So, very much not worth it. It's only limited by one person or one target anyway, so please don't spend that talent on there. Uh, void Tendrils or Sheer Terror. Um, I decided to go with Void Tendrils, Fet Tendrils, to give myself and my team, and my backline in particular, my casters, more uh, appeal, uh, if anything, too, as well. If you got a melee heavy, they got a melee heavy front line and they're charging into backline, just pop up Void Tendrils, and they'll be stuck in that for about 8 10 seconds. Uh, and it grips everyone within the location, too, as well. Similar to your fear, can it, you know, now hit multiple, like the entire target frame of an AoE spell. Chose not to do that, or chose to get that one just because the amount of damage for Psychic Scream. Again, it's more so like just a peel move than it is, say, like, you know, an aggressive mood of, uh, aggressive mindset of a Disc Priest is that you're looking to stay more conservative and more just, you know, not being super aggressive and so forth. I mean, you're really looking to, you know, help mitigate as much damage and to support class support healer for that matter you're not looking to be more aggressive like some of the other classes and so forth such as like fist weaving as for monks or more aggressive with holy or or you know uh, shamis shamans and so forth or even evokers for that matter but disc priests are more stationary healers and more kind of isolated so the idea is to get as much utility out as much as possible making all those those burst heals happen to your effect so not worth it to have this like screen by 75%. You're going to not be using it as often as possible. So the Void Tendrils does benefit you, especially if you're kiting around with your group. You'll lock someone up with this. If you do end up getting caught out, just lock some, the whole group up with Void Tendrils and it snares them. So great utility, utility um, talent for RBGs, 10v10s. Mind control, uh, yes, again, it's situational. Um, you find yourself in situations where you can use mind control. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using it as regularly as possible. I would say when you're kind of steamrolling a team fight and you're guaranteed to be winning it, and they've got like you know two healers to their to our three, you can then use that um, if they're down like a DPS or two in order to mitigate one of those healers and throw them off the ledge or use mind control to throw someone off the ledge of BS or a lumber mill or gold mine, etc. And um, it's very a situational talent. I recommend using it just because it gives you that opportunity and more utility if you happen to keep steamrolling that kind of team fight and creating more disaster for the healers, uh, healers in particular, but your priority would be on healers and it would be DPS. There's no reason to be mind controlling DPS get the healers in the back line and throw them off like, you know, mid or something like that. They'll be doing your team a huge favor. <laughs> so, mind control would be one of those situational talents. Uh, the next is Words of the Pious. Uh, for 12 seconds after casting a power word shield, you deal 10% uh, additional damage and healing with Smite Holy Nova. Since it's not running Holy Nova, and I wouldn't recommend it in like a talent tree such as this, 
I just don't find it necessary unless you're kind of running that particular spec for PvE or so like that. PvE would make more sense if you find yourself spamming those particular, you know, give out more damage and in return you heal too as well for atonement, so with smite and such like that, but not necessary, really not necessary to purchase that for, uh, to use that talent for PvP. Uh, master Spell. Master Spell. So, this is a huge one, and this is one of my favorite moves to be used as like initiating on team fights because we want to get as many buffs off of them as possible in like an initial team fight in order to put more output damage and reduce their survivability in those team fights. So math spell is often one of those first things I put on their team during a team fight. And then by the time it's on cooldown, it's often that a mage or a pally or whomever pops certain cooldowns like ice block or divine shield, I can just go ahead and use that once more while their, you know, damage debuffs um, have all been mitigated by my first spell, my first master spell. So use it as often as possible. Just be wary with master spell that if you use it on an affliction lock, and if they do have, like, multiple, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of that move. They spread that dispel, I can't think of the name. They, it's a dispel seed, seed of corruption, I think it is. Seed of corruption, or um, shoot, I can't remember the name of it. It's um, yeah, seed of corruption, I think it is. It could be seed of corruption. It's one or the other, but it's one of those moves that where if you dispel it, it hurts you in return. So uh, what you want to do is just be careful when casting that because what you'll do is uh, you'll die. <laughs> I mean, you'll master spell three of those and you've lost. A tremendous amount of HP really quick you can go down from 80% to zero I've done it a couple times to learn from the mistakes so just be aware of that during team fights is to mask spell conscientiously when you don't see any of those particular ticks from Affy locks so it's a great way to start out prior to that Affy lock getting those ticks to start uh, unstable affliction that's what's called unstable affliction so if you see unstable affliction do not cast your master spell so really you want to cast your master spell at the start of the team fight because it allows you to, um, it allows you to, you know, remove those buffs that were all buffed up during the initial, you know, starting phase of the match. Uh, next talent that we have here is the move with Grace. Again, it's going to be situational based, and the situations don't happen often as frequently. So, leap of faith for a cooldown. Didn't find it necessary to put the talent tree in there. So I went ahead and did it, uh, just because again it's situational, the cooldown will be up by that time the flag carrier gets the uh, next flag, blah blah blah, blah etc, etc. So you don't necessarily need that extra 30 second cooldown, doesn't find it to be necessary. Uh, power word infusion, uh, infuses the target with power for 20 seconds, increases haste by 25%. It's an absolute must for priests. Absolute must for priest. I mean, haste is your primary stat. It's what haste and versatility are your primary stats to be working with. And with this power infusion, because you can cast it on others, um, players, you get that benefit in return when you get twins of the sun priestess. That also reflects the benefit to you too as well. So increases the, you know, the boomies haste or the locks haste in RBGs, and then in return you get that 25% haste to as well. So you get both the, the best of both worlds. And that extra haste just helps with the global cooldowns, you know, spamming your purge of wickeds, getting more dispels out, blah blah blah, casting time is decreased for mass dispel. You just get a whole mix of utility to start for 20 seconds. A great way as an initiator to start team fights. Um, the next is I had not choose was Sanguine Teachings uh, or a Vampiric Embrace. Um, again, these are more single target leeches and such like that, and single target, you know, healing and so forth, and when your damage output is low as, you know, you have a build not revolving around shadow damage, um, you just got a few couples of shadows, a few, you know, moves with shadow, it doesn't find it to be necessary to have that extra 50% single target damage added to it. Because again, Atonement applies to both shadow and holy and radiant, whatever damage, so as long as you're putting out damage, you'll be able to heal in response. So the additional Vampiric Embrace didn't seem necessary. Neither does the Leech. Uh, priests don't prioritize Leech as a primary or secondary stat for, for enhancements. They generally prioritize... Um, um, they generally prioritize the uh, uh, speed. 
uh, because it just helps with the mobility and actually adds to your kit too as well, like your power word shield, your pennant, and your angelic feathers. So, leech I would say just avoid in general, which uh, you know goes into this one too, saying one or something like that. Um, not necessary, just because you don't have that first tier set to work with. Um, I avoided using uh, Tith Invasion. Uh, Tith Invasion, um, for the purpose that, again, 75% damage less to me during like an initial kill, it's not it's not going to be a game changer, and you can just easily heal yourself up or have your team heal you up really quickly there afterwards, so having that on your kit doesn't make sense. It's a really quick fix to heal yourself if you happen to do that damage. Uh, they're not going to switch targets to you if you happen to do that damage to yourself, or you're not going to die in itself. Um, granted you use it at the right time, but the idea is to use it at the right time on their target in order to, to make a kill secure target uh, That your target call has been calling out. So that's the one way you'll benefit it if you don't uh, Just be more conscientious of that When to put it down and at the right time and you'll benefit it from the most uh, The next is going to be inspiration it reduces your targets physical damage taken by 5% 15 seconds after a critical heal with flash heal or penance. I chose to avoid this particular talent just because um, my particular PvP talent, and I, I can be a little bit more flexible with more melee heavy comp classes. So what I'll do is kind of combine the strength of soul, which is that power word shield reduces all physical damage by 15%, while well, the shield persists. So if you're versing against a hard physical melee comp, um, you can add the inspiration, which adds another 5% to that physical damage reduction uh, because you'll often find yourself healing with penance and um, flash heal from time to time. So just an additional 5% on top of that 15 just helps the damage reduction. Takes less damage overall. That's 20% damage reduction that you can use during RPGs and team fights from melee heavy classes. Otherwise, don't bother if they're not melee heavy. Uh, reduces the cooldown of mass spell by 20% and reduces the cast time. So I have a bit of confliction between this just because of mass dispel casting it as often as possible it does take a chunk of your mana it's 20,000 mana per dispel so you know casting three of those and you're looking at already a chunk of your mana already going down within a 20 you know within less than a minute during a team fight and that can be absolutely disastrous and um, quite often the gap time for that regular mist dispel of 45 seconds to 25 seconds you're not going to find yourself dis mass dispelling a bunch of shields and ice blocks etc it's very rare that something like that will happen so you don't really need the extra mana drainage but in addition to the uh, the once you've got the initial mass dispel of their buffs doing it another time besides just doing regular dispels and so forth you don't have to it's not really necessary uh, for additional casting times because it doesn't the the cons outweigh the pros is what I'm trying to say uh, power word shield and leap of faith increase your targets movement speed by 40% for 30 three seconds body and soul I love this one it creates more mobility for yourself and your team during fights team fights if you need a peel if you need to if the target needs, you know, if our one of our team members needs to peel, if you need to escape certain damage output, um, and etc., you uh, can use that. The extra movement speed really does help. Um, so make use of that as often as possible. And you're really spamming power word shield quite often. So a lot of the people are going to get those movement speed buffs, uh, especially like your war, your you know, your melee frontline benefit from it really well. Um, the next is going to be Void Shield, uh, one of my favorite ones actually. I like to, in t initial team fights, I'll put down a uh, Power Word Shield and a Renew on myself. And again, since you're not the target of those team fights, you can kind of freely sit there with your shield draining a bit, you know, because of one of your spells or one of your your debuffs here. Um, yeah, the absorb amount decays every three second or every one second. Um, but you can start putting out some more of those radiance so your radiance spells when you cast it up on 10 people in a team fight like it just fills up your your power with shield in response to that so it kind of comp it compensates for that amount of um 
it compensates for that loss and that lack of. So you can kind of sustain a power word shield throughout the team fight and mitigate a good portion of the damage by just applying it to yourself and putting out more powered radiances and some shadow damage too as well. Uh, it just keeps refilling it. So it helps you just sustain longer in team fights. Um, your Mind Blast critical strikes uh, for Apathy reduce your target's movement speed by 75% for 4 seconds. I wouldn't recommend this uh, in terms of talent, just because um, as a dis disciplined priest for RBGs, your priority stat is not crit, it is haste. And so the Mind Blast, uh, the critical strike, doesn't benefit from your, what, like less than 10% crit chance you have as a as a, as a disciplined priest. I mean, the op, the, op, the, 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 um, you know, chance of that having you get that is very rare, so I don't find it necessary to put that in perspective. You gotta be more so of an aggressive healer, that would apply more so for like Shadow if you're running crit, um, than it would just complete. Uh, again, the proc for crits for Mind Blast aren't all too high anyways with such a low percentage, and it wouldn't be something to consider. Uh, next talent we have here is Unwavering Will. Well above 75%, the cast uh, time of your next of your Flash, Heal, and Smite are reduced by 10%. Highly recommend specking into this uh, for the fact that, again, you're not going to be the target of targets during a team fight. Um, so you can kind of just freely cast, you know, some damaging output Smite, which also heals in a response. Um, it's also reduced that, that you know, 10%. You'll likely stay up by 75% health until the team fight's been lost, um, where you'll start going down lower than that. Um, and Flash Shield, again, you can cast it a little bit more freely too as well, um, with being above 75%. But you'll find yourself m above 75% more so than anything else. So I would highly recommend uh, talenting into that. Um, Twist of Fate, one of my favorites. After damaging or healing a target below 35% health, Gain 10% increased damage and healing for 8 seconds. This is a must talent to have for RBGs. Again, with targets being targeted on the opposite team um, at 35% health low when the target gets to that point, you're going to get increased damage and healing for uh, 8 seconds. And not that it stacks or anything, but it stays consistent if that stays you know, ongoing. So um, in addition to that increased damage that you put out on that particular target, it heals in return. And then that additional healing is increased by 10%. So you're looking at an additional 20% technically healing um, going back to your team from outputting on damage and just heals in general. It's definitely on Twist of Fate. Highly recommend. Uh, the next is Throws of Pain. Shadow Word Pain and Purge the Wicked deal an additional 5% damage. When an enemy dies while afflicted by your Shadow Word Pain and Purge the Wicked, you gain 1% mana. Highly recommend specking into this particular talent for the fact that you're going to be having, you know, a multitude of Purge the Wickets spammed on the team fight or during the team fight. Um, and so if a target dies, happens to die or whatever during team fight, and if it steamrolls there afterwards, you kill off 10 people during a team fight, 10 players in a team fight, if it steamrolls, 10 people dead in the team fight. Uh, you know, you get 10% of your mana back, with them all being, you know, afflicted by uh, Purse of Wicked. And an increased damage to output too as well, just procs with other, you know, damaging output talents you have. It just, you know, adds to it, so the more damage output they put, the more healing you have in return. So highly recommend um, putting your spec into the Rose of Pain for that reason. Uh, the next is going to be um, Binding Heals. I prefer using Binding Heals over Angel's Mercy for the fact that, again, um, Desperate Prayer applies to a really single target, you know, not damage reduction, but health increase um, for yourself. But again, you're not going to be the target of target during these team fights for the most part, and you can kind of just ward that off. So I would highly recommend using the 20% of Flash Heal healing on other targets. Also, heals you, it also stacks kind of with your. Stacks with your 50% heal too as well that you get from Purge the Wicked in addition to the 15% um, uh, increase from healing and also those from those instant flashes um, that you get too as well when they're procced you get those you get the additional 20% so it adds up and it just it, it allows you to sustain team fights longer without actually healing yourself in a turn you can just allow your heals that you put on other people to heal yourself when it procs. 
Again, you don't need to put into desperate prayer or anything in relation to that too as well. So go over in just a moment. Just because, again, you're not going to be the target to target in two points. I chose not to go with Divine Star or Halo for the fact that you just don't need the additional um, AoE healing in particular in the Divine Star. Not ideal unless you're kind of in a situation where we're all lined up or relatively bunch together in those team fights and as well as the enemy team because it does do a, a bit of damage output too as well on hero response. I choose not to use either of those AoE spells just because the bulk of my AoE is coming from my procced up powered radiance. Uh, the Divine Star also doesn't apply atonement. It also uh, diminishes after six targets so if you have a big team fight going on with eight you know eight members or plus it doesn't, uh, the, the healing is reduced and the damage is reduced along the top of that. So, um, you're also not running Shadow Covenant, which uh, turns those two spells into shadow based moves. So, you don't necessarily have to find your, um, you know, using these often because, again, they're not empowered. You don't, you don't have the shadow, you don't even have the empowered Halo or the empowered Divine Star to be even benefiting off of that talent. Um, the next is going to be uh, translu in Translucent Image. Fade reduces damage you take by 10%. That 10% um, is great when you do pop fade because it is active for 10 seconds and helps just some mitigation of, say, warrior damage or DK damage that's been in place on you. Great way to just avoid... Um, you know, just some additional damage that you take during that period of time when you pop fade. Great kind of escape. It is a escape method when you use it for, you know, removing snares and so forth. Um, but the um, um, but the additional 10% helps too as well. So in addition to the speed boost that you can kind of way away with, you just take less damage as you're working your way out of those particular binds. Uh, the next is going to be Mind Games. Uh, mind Games is one of my favorite, favorite moves as an additional kill secure shadow move that also in response you know in return heals the team too as well for what damage they put out so assault an enemy's mind at dealing 24,423 which obviously is increased as the gear goes up shadow damage and briefly reverses their perception of reality for every five seconds the next 35,163 damage they deal will heal the target and the next 35,163 healing they will deal will damage their target. So really bring these, bring mind games to the team fight as soon as you see that one of the targets that your target call is being put on is getting low. And mind games will kind of really secure and, 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 and isolate that particular target in order to bring them down relatively quick. Um, this is my casting order for um, kill targets. It's mind game is mind blast. Solence, Smite, if needed, and then Power Word, Shadow Word, Death, just to kind of add more as a, a bulkier damage. It works on a good cooldown reduction in order to get the most out of that rotation. Um, let's see, the next is going to be... Uh, I hadn't chosen anything in terms of mind game benefits, just for the fact that it's a 45 second cooldown. Um, I, I'm okay with that. I mean, I don't. I'm not a heavy damage dealer in general. I am a support class. If I can get a support move, rather than kind of like an enhanced support move at the expense of other support moves, um, I'm okay with that. So this mind game's just the trick, ir regardless of those additional talents I find here on the bottom right. Uh, improved fade would be a consideration to choose from. Um, reduce the cooldown to fade by five seconds, just in case you're getting trained again and getting trained and getting trained, and you have a difficulty escaping that DK's chains of ice, that warrior's hamstring, etc. You can use improved fade in order to distance yourself that much more on a more frequent basis with improved fade. Reducing the cooldown of fade by five seconds uh, be something to consider. Um, you know, for that option, you can kind of respect depending on their team cop. Otherwise, I chose not to do it just because I can dispel most of the time and often I'm not up against DKs. Uh, I am up against more so warriors and everything else than the DK. So, and, and quite often, some DKs don't even train priests, so it's kind of like a hit or miss. Uh, the next is going to be the Crystal Line Reflection, a power word shield into the heels of the target for 9,845. It reflects 12% of the damage absorbed. Highly recommend getting this particular talent for the heal, for the safe heal with the shield. 
um, the damage reflection to as well back to the you know opponent. Um, so, and then the um, yeah the atonement that applies to it too as well. So it's very beneficial. It's a great last second save kind of deal. It's just why won't he die? Throw a shield up on him, healed, and it reflects a portion of the damage back to you as well. Um, lights, inspiration, not recommended. Increase the maximum health ganged from desperate prayer, but again, it's not recommended. You're not going to be using desperate prayer as the priority, you know, part of your kit unless you're getting trained. Um, and also, if you need a little bit more sustaining by yourself, the kind of deal if you're getting really focused upon. But otherwise, you're not going to be the target of target in team fights, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, this one's great. Uh, Surge of Light. Your healing spells and smite have a 8% chance to make your next flash heal instant cast. It costs no mana. Stacked up to 2. Um, this is phenomenal. So any healing spells that you do put out, um, you do get the 8% proc chance uh, for a building up of 2 flash heals. So in terms of that, great talent tree. You can benefits just off of anything that you get via flash heal and all your flash heal benefits. So make sure you're specking around that particular build in order to benefit the most from Surge of Light. So highly recommended this talent tree uh, in particular. So again, as such a utility-based support healer, it's great to be kind of like the saving grace of the team fights. So um, power, life is a must. Um, a word of holy power that heals a target for 17,581. The target is below 35% health. Power life um, heals the four heals for 400 poor, for 400 percent more, and the cooldown of power life is reduced by 20 seconds. This is a phenomenal spell for if your target and your team is being targeted and brought down quick, you can save them in a heartbeat. And it's such a cooldown, it's such a quick cooldown of just 10 seconds. You can do it right again if it happens to happen within a 10 second period. So it's a great great utility heal that happens kind of like last minute if you see someone going down quick in a team fight so ideally to choose that over the new one increase the healing of your spells by three percent that more applies to holy where you have more healing variety and versatility and you know aoe dots etc than it would disc priests since your heals come more for your damage than itself just being straight healing um, the next is going to be Angelic Bulwark. I chose to do this. Um, I'm a little indifferent about it, and I may switch this one up in particular. When an attack brings you below 30% health, you gain an Absorption Shield um, equal to 15% of your maximum health for 20 seconds. Cannot occur more than once every 20 seconds. I'm a bit indifferent on this one. I've actually considered changing this one in for probably the maybe the Mast spell or maybe something else in particular, just because. Um, I, again, I'm not the target of target in team fights, but again, if you happen to get brought down low, it helps just kind of mitigate that damage if you are a target. Um, and then it just realizes, oh, they can't kill me. So why did you know what was going on with that? They have no point of they'll switch targets after they get the bulwark down. And again, it's just a minute and a half cooldown, so it's just it's a great time to kind of you know reutilize and so forth going forward. Uh, the last talent that we have here on the left side is going to be um, Void Shift, and one of the newer ones on the recent patch is Essence Devour. Um, I chose not to get Essence Devour just because I don't benefit often from Shadow Fiend unless I was specced into it. Um, healing a nearby injured ally, again it's a 3 minute cooldown, it's not necessarily worth it unless it's applied into your kit with the actual talent spec. So, wouldn't recommend getting that particular talent over Void Shift. Void Shift. This is like a second power life. I mean, this is uh, this is a great combo to use. This is when a target that you and the currently targeted party or raid member swap health percentages. Increase the lower health percentage of the two to 25% if below that amount. Five minute cooldown, and again, this is a saving grace of utility kit as a support class for Disc Priests. Void Shift is going to come in so handy when you've got someone else low and you're at near full HP. You hit Void Shift, um, it brings them all the way up to full. It brings you down, so you may get targeted thereafter, which is actually very common because you'll be brought down to their HP that was extremely low, or your 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 ally that was extremely low. And what you do instantaneously after, which is take yourself power life, because that additional 400% increased healing heals you back to full. So you get like a double heal benefit proc that you get from when you hit it with Void Shift, 
and then using power life there afterwards. So you get this really, you know, this one after another proc that heals, saves your your ally getting nuked down in team fights, and then you can just save yourself in response to that too with the power life. Um, so yeah, great opportunity to kind of like utilize your kit as often as possible, um, as well as putting out you know the most sustainable heals and damage you can as your particular class. You should go anywhere between generally five mil to ten mil um, per match for he for damage output done. Your healing should roughly be anywhere between. It depends on the situation, obviously, but um, your healing can go anywhere between you know 30 mil to 50 mil for that matter. So um, you'll find it to be very spreadable. Such a versatile utility-based class that um, really benefits the team as a whole. It's, it's an enjoyable class to play and. Hopefully seeing this talent spec um, will allow you to kind of work with it and work with your kit, work with your ability to learn how to play RBGs as a Discipline Priest and maximize your, you know, your output and your gameplay potential um, as a support healer. I will be putting down below in the description as well uh, the information associated with Murloc.io where I've fluctuated some of these talent builds to optimize them a bit more in comparison between IC Veins and Murloc.io. It's two great websites to reference some additional information that you can get out, um, you know, in regards to, um, you know, optimizing your build. Um, and again, these are specifically for 10v10 RBGs. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me if need be. Uh, please, if you did like this video, comment, like, and subscribe to the top tier PvP YouTube channel. Um, there's other social medias too as well, so feel free to follow us on, you know, Instagram, um, Twitter, uh, TikTok, etc. Uh, we're a relatively new community, but looking forward to building upon it in the near future. And um, there also is a top tier PvP Discord too as well. Um, if you're interested in joining, we run random BGs and rated BGs. We have events scheduled and so forth. So if you feel interested or compelled to join, feel free to do so. Um, it'd be greatly appreciated. We can just expand upon that community, expand our knowledge, and, and improve our gameplay. Um, anyways, hope everyone enjoyed this content, and I'm um, looking forward to making more videos for everyone. Um, and you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. And take care, and I'll see you in the next video.